Forever Big Boss one. Yeah. Pepe hands. Dude, that actually just does suck. Like, I don't know what you can even do in that situation. We could have gotten higher. Like, we should have gotten, like, 4th or 5th place, probably. Pretty easily. Just by, like, losing a little bit of less health here and there. Small things. But, I mean... There's almost nothing we can actually do in terms of making our board better than it is. Just a talking point, you ever considered not using Wheel Streak as an economy? All these boards look tame until 17, you had a chance both Knight or Druid win streak there? I mean, I was trying to win streak. We had Warriors, Beasts, Druids. We had everything I could have tried to win streak with. And all the boards were beating me. Unless I'm literally re-rolling in those rounds, which you would never do. That doesn't make sense. So the question is, do we prioritize Enchantresses over Bounty Hunter here? Alright, dude. I feel so bad about picking Enchantress early these days. Like, if you can get two upgraded Druids early, they feel so nice. But it's such a huge bait if you go into it and you can't complete them. Smuggler on three is pretty nuts. I think I probably just want to disrespect knights. I think knights are honestly not that good right now. Just they're decent. They're shoot. definitely viable. They're not like a bad comp, but I don't think they're that good right now. Double axe BM on three is actually hilarious. Okay. Now all we have to do, all we have to do is just get it. All we have to do is get it. We have Smuggler, guys. Look at this. This is the dream. Look at how dreamy this is. We got Embarrassment of Riches on round one. Smuggler on round two. The Double Axe Beastmaster pack on round three. And now we've got four rolls. We have four rolls with, with Smuggler to find, like the odds are so stacked here. Our odds are so good to find it. Our Beastmaster just got Three kills. Tied with axe. I'm ready. Do it. Give it. We lost. How good is unstoppable? Should have bought that slaughter. It's a little sloppy there, not buying the slaughter. So don't have a single equipable. That's okay. We just want our big man axe to just take all the aggro here. Honestly, this is a good start to a game. Even though we didn't get the orc buff. So be it. Oh, our axe is so dead. Oh, he's unstoppable! Bloodseeker can't heal! We win! Oh, Tinker Rockets, we lose! This is why uh, not buying that slaughter was a mistake. We lost this one because we didn't buy the slaughter. This is supposed to be a slaughter instead of a BM, basically. It should be stepped back further. The only thing that matters is having everything just aggroed on the axe. So now we can't hit this interest points. Um, I want to get the primordial online, probably. It's actually not that good here, unfortunately, just because we kind of already have a tank. This is weird. We can't play for interests, and I don't want to level up here either, so I'm going to use my money on bench. There's this interesting concept in the early game in uh, Audre Lords, which is basically the idea of like using your money for bench, which isn't... It's not really something I talk about very much, um, but basically it is like a fourth thing you can spend your money on, right? Money is for like interest, leveling, rolling, or bench, and in the early game, this idea of bench is pretty valuable. It's basically just trying to keep my options open where I can, um, giving myself outs. Like, I'm using this money to just, like, keep options alive, which is nice. Loose streak it is? Nah, we're not loose streaking here. Warrior is a good uh, win streak build early. We have a level two, even if it is axe. Um, I don't know if we can win streak necessarily, but losing on round four, not a big deal. 
There's a bat rod upgrade. And this is this is a good example of like what I mean when I say like playing for bench. Like this is just like nice to pair up. So now we can continue playing for bench. And just run a bunch of random two stars. Or we can sell something and level. I think I like the idea of leveling all of a sudden. Um, I do really want this third warrior. Feels really awkward we haven't found this third warrior yet. Again, this is the downside of like missing that slarda there. This is perfect. So I want like two things on axe, one thing on like kind of splitting to other things. Like two two attackers for axe, the level two, one attacker for my bat rider who's level two and techie, and just one attacker on some miscellaneous thing. Um, want things to split tank as much as possible. Unless you have like an omega tank. Then you're good without that. So obviously we're just going to collect more pairs here. Looks pretty good. This is kind of what like the early game is supposed to be like, unless you're trying to force a specific comp. Which, it's not necessarily good to be doing, unless you find a really good start for something. We got Tusk, which is the third warrior. We want to hit this interest point. It is a little impossible. Let's do that. I think this makes the most sense. Um, we just don't need the Beastmaster anymore. My positioning is a little off here, but that's fine. Um, we're not really doing anything with any of these. Axe 3? Uh, I don't think so. I think Axe should never really be part of my late game comp. I mean, I'll, I'll click on this. If I find five axes in the next pack, it's worth it, I guess. This, uh, Slark descending from heaven. <clears throat> that happens way too often. Okay. It's fine. We'll just go, like, a standard warrior comp. Um, round 10 might actually give us some direction. Interestingly enough, we're probably gonna get a tier 3 on 10, because we have Smuggler. Dude, this, like, this is such a good dream. Like, round one embarrassment, round two smuggler is so nuts, by the way. It's like, it's really, truly ridiculous when this happens. So we are looking for hitting this interest point. We do have a board that feels like it can take basically anything on. And I do think we are going to sell up to this interest point. We wish we could do something better about um, these positionings. Mostly we just want, like, everything on Axe. Axe is literally never going to die, so this is fine. Like, oh shit, did I, I was going to sell out both of these. This was, this is a misplay. I was going to bank on winning, sell out both of these to get the end point. I was like messing around too much with the positioning. Ranked to big boss two, won that last game Swim was in. Oh, grats, dude. So we get rewarded for not selling out here. This guy has a really good board. This is Starfall. Can we go Batrider? I think Batrider can't really fit into this, into what we're doing here at all, right? Abaddon could be good for a while. Batriders don't even stack that well, right? I think we just have to abandon the idea. We're not really in this that deep, right? So we're not on streak, we have high health. We want to win this, but we don't want to win it so badly that we're going to break this interest point. Basically, we're just chilling here. There's no reason to do anything crazy. Uh, pairing knights with Abaddon is nice. We're waiting for Pudge so Abaddon can then pair knights for the bat rider we have like as the casual level two. We can replace uh, something like Tusk for something like Pudge or something like Tiny would be really good. And uh, we can kind of get online that way. I'm gonna set this ogre up a little bit. I don't want my one stars getting attacked on at the beginning. I want them to have to like walk around a little bit. Uh, pathing is so wonky in this game. It feels like it feels like sometimes it doesn't really matter what your positioning is and your units can just be like. can actually just start fights in random orders. If you stack Bowdas, do they each get a second stack or does it increase from the same stack? It increases from the same stack. It's a little weird in terms of how it works though. I don't think we're going Luna either. And the resale value on them is just awkward. Oops. How do you feel about buying TB just as a standalone with AM? It gets 100% pure damage. If it gets his ability off, he can chunk quite well. Um, It's probably okay. I don't really like it that much. 
So here it comes down to the interest point or not. Um, I think at the end of the day, we kind of need the interest point. Luna is doing nothing. Abaddon was kind of nice to think about, but it's not really worth getting out of the interest for, and we are just not going for more of this. This is fine. Like, we've got a good warrior comp. We shouldn't be having any problems here, so we can upgrade the tusk here. Tusk 2, it's a little late for something that does want to go into warriors. And I could buy the Wind Ranger. There's a chance I actually want to go into hunters. If I get the hunter perk here, I will go into warriors hunters. Warriors hunters work pretty well together. The most standard thing is to go six hunters, three warriors, but maybe six warriors, three hunters could be okay. My boy Marcus seems to like it. Okay, Hunters it is. This is nuts, by the way. The items we've been chosen, the items we've seen are like almost perfect. Like, very insane. I think we do want to level up and put something in here. Feels kind of awkward. I guess I would just put it in like a wind runner, right? Level 1 of Windrunner is probably not going to make that much of a difference. But it could, and I do actually want to be starting to, you know, win some rounds. I'm not really lose streaking, and it isn't costing me an interest point immediately, so it's probably worth it to do this year. Of course, then we're going to go on to buy the other Windrunner, so... I think we are looking to go into the 6 Hunter version. I think it has to be better. Um, but there's still an off chance we could go into the 6 Warrior version. Our early game is going to be a little weak. That's something we're going to have to be okay with. On two games with three warriors, six hunters. Hmm. Whew, that's an okay pack, actually. I'll do whatever it takes to survive. So this mixes things up a little bit. Um. If I sell out of six, it's a little too early. I would like Undead. Looks like Windrunner, yeah. I mean, I still can't actually like change this board, I think. It's a little, it's a little chunky. We still just have to run on these two stars and hope that they get enough independent value. My synergies are, of course, not great here. Um, I mean, we have a bunch of two stars, but they're not, they're not even really great two stars and they're not doing anything together that's amazing. It's like Batrider isn't paired with anything. Orcs and beasts aren't doing anything, so that's fine. I think we're in a good spot here. It doesn't really matter that we're not winning early fights. Again, I, I think it's really important to not like over-prioritize early fights. I think a lot of people make the mistake of over-prioritizing like having health early. It doesn't really matter. It almost doesn't really impact the game. You want economy early and you want good items. And our economy is not as good as it could be, but our items are basically perfect. And bench. Bench matters. So oddly enough, if we're in Hunter's Warriors, we could actually go for a level three X. That actually does have some value, right? Did I wish my board could be anything different from this though? This is such a bad board. Can run like any random hero instead of Windrunner. Could be like, I mean, if this, if I had like a warrior that wasn't a level one axe, it would be a good choice. I mean, Witch Doctor pairing for the Batrider probably would have been a little bit better, I guess, but then I would have had to miss this interest point to get that. I don't even know if this is better. It's probably better. Kind of has to be. Get X Blink Dagger? I don't think it really needs Blink. And here's Beastmaster. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, there's no other way to uh, this isn't just point up. We're just gonna have to lose one more. That's okay. This should be basically the last one we're losing for a while. Um, well, not necessarily this. I'm down to lose through like 16, 17. We should be able to stabilize pretty quickly though. We are gonna need some upgrades for these hunters. What's the best build for fall from grace? Four out of six, four or six knights. Um, I'm not actually sure. There's a build that can use six of them, which is like knights mages that can use the six undead. Um. I don't think you actually really want to get it up to 6 for Fall From Grace. I think that's honestly a mistake. We do have Embarrassment of Riches, which means we're going to get an additional option. Can we beat Wolves? Is there any way we can? So one of the, one of the awkwardnesses here is that... Because of these items, we're losing these early rounds. We don't have, like, chain mails or anything, and that really matters. Like, our items scale into the late game really well, but not having, like, a single chain mail or blightstone or gloves of haste, or even something like a claymore would do well in these early rounds. Um, but it's a little tight. That's okay. We're at least able to beat these creeps. We got this down. <clears throat> Six and dead plus deckies is insane. You can deal 11k damage with one bomb. Yeah, it's alright. It might be a kind of cheesy build that can get places sometimes. I don't... I'm not really a fan of six and dead. I was, um, but... Apparently they cha... <sighs> Dude. These globals are, like, the best things ever. If I lose this game because I can't, like, find what I'm looking for in packs, that's going to be really... Really sad. I mean, it's not like our board is necessarily bad. We need to save our gold for rolling, though. These packs are actually completely insane. That Slarda round three is sad. Yeah, that was actually a misplay that ended up punishing us. Okay, this should be the last one we lose. I'll roll down at 7. The thing about Hunters is they require expensive units. Medusa, Tidehunter, and Marana are all really expensive. You really don't want to be rolling until 8. And we need the Nagas even more than a normal build because we have Retaliate. Hmm. Although I don't want to just like lose Streak down to 8th place. That also sounds like a bad idea. Bleeding a little too much health here. They won't be able to touch me. I mean, I could get, like, three Hunters in, but at level one, they're just not really doing much of anything, right? Oh, Retaliate. Oh, Naga. Oh, Slardar. Dude, what the heck? I mean, these upgrades are honestly doing enough to carry me a bit. Like, we got in the fourth warrior I wanted for a while. Four warriors is just good. We actually upgrade our Windrunner, so. There we go. We're stable. I mean, we're not really stable, but we're good enough. So the question is, I think I take the natural level here. Since we're locked in for the 50 gold interest already, we do want every pack. So when you natural level, when you level before you see the natural pack, you basically increase your odds of seeing what you want, right? Which in this case is more expensive things. I don't feel stable yet. That makes me feel a little better. Oh, 
Okay. So suddenly it's worth it to get the hunters online. We gotta be feeling pretty good here. Like, the hunter perk is actually doing work. The warrior perk is actually- Oh! 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 Oh, that's all- Oh! Has this always done that? No, it hasn't. Oh, that's so cool. Oh. Okay, so how much can we play for interest? Because I rolled a little bit there and then we still lost. I think Pudga is quite important. I mean, I think I literally have to keep playing for interest. We're at 30 in health, and my board is actually okay. I think I'm beating, like, half boards right now. So, I'm like, I can take this 50-50. I think this 50-50 is fine to do. We tried six beasts with teeth and claw. Ah, uh, yeah, I tried it. I don't really like it. It's good on paper. Hmm. I'm kind of gangbanged by this assassin hybrid. Always highlighted units, but it highlights units which would trigger a board upgrade. Yeah. Bloodseeker demolished your backline. Yeah, that's okay. Could have started working on a Windrunner 3. Or we're just rolling. This is a pretty good pack, guys. Honestly. It's not of bad. There we go. So we no longer need Slardar, right? I feel like Slardar can't really be my warrior here. So we're out of Juggernaut. We're in Medusa. We've got Pudge. Vanguard is quite good as well. We've got Pudge, Slardar, Axe as our tanks. I'm selling this bat rider for sure. Our Draw upgrade. Pudge going up. Slaughter upgrade. I mean, honestly, it's fitting in for a bit. Why not? Why the heck not? I mean, it could actually help me win a few boards. It'll basically be here until the Kanka gets here. So the one awkward thing about going Axe... Axe seems like a good choice in six hunters, but it doesn't work with Nagas, and it might seem nice because it pairs with Orcs and Warriors, both of which you need. But not only does it not really work with Retaliate, but... Also, Beastmaster doesn't even want to be a final piece on your board unless it goes to Beastmaster 3, which we have... I mean, it doesn't look like it's going to Beastmaster 3 this game. Let's put it that way. So we could use one more Hunter here. I heard this 6 Hunter thing is pretty good. I don't know, man. Is it is it possible to use axe here? I fight in Selimene's name. Like the more I think about it, the more axe just can't really make sense. Like we have retaliate. I think we have to sell these seven axes, guys. I think we have no choice. We Sorry, boys. We say we are. Axe is trash. Sell him. Yeah, axe is trash. I mean, with Retaliate, Slardar just makes sense, too. 
I, I mean, a three star is a neat thing. X is so bad. I've pretty much never been more annoyed in my life right now. Heard you talking shit? Yeah, I guess. I don't know, dude. Look how bad this is. We were doing fine until we put accent on our board. Now look. Okay, let's actually properly stabilize here, huh? The question is, I mean, now the stabilize is going to 9, right? I think we actually have to just feel like we're stable. There's nothing else to do, right? It's probably okay. <clears throat> it's all about what improves your board. And in this comp, we need a ninth slot pretty badly. The Pudge completing Pudge completing Warriors and Undead is really important. We can't not have six Hunters right now either. Um, and even the Naga pair is something that's kind of nice. Uh, unfortunately, my units are not focusing this. Oh, oh, Sniper went. Oh, Assassin coming in hot. We're good. Okay, so we can afford to be a little greedy here. Greed is good. I, I never understood this like weird negative connotation of the word greed in video games as, as like a as a strategy Because the idea apparently is that like, you know people like I know a lot for example What you guys say is like oh swim you shouldn't have done that that was too greedy But nobody ever uses greed in like a positive way, which makes me think people think it's a bad thing. I mean you need to be greedy in a lot of situations Generally, greed is good. Yeah, greed is good. So now we're looking for upgrades. Now that we're level 9, uh, Tidehunter wouldn't be bad. You can put the Pudga in now. And here's the Kanka. Kanka is supposed to be the replacement over Axe. Maybe when it gets to level 2, that could make sense. Nothing really happening here apart from that, though. Here's the Sniper. Relic is sweet. Relic on Dusa is nice. She scales with attack damage pretty well. Medusa is tankier than Windrunner, so her being kind of closer to the outside they makes a little bit more sense. And here, what are our outs? We're looking for like Sniper, Dusa, or Pudge, Let's and we kind this. of have to like play to those outs right now. There's Pudge. I think we might chill for a bit. I can still add a Windrunner 3 and just uh, take a chill pill. I don't think I want to roll right now. I feel I have to feel like I'm beating every board. There are prey. I don't see a possible way I'm not beating every board. And interest is starting to matter again. This is the guy that beat me last time though with the level three tree. Um, yeah, this was like slightly close. When Kanka goes to level two, I have to sell the axe for him. And when I get Tide Hunter, I have to sell Beastmaster for him. Show the damage. Retaliate just melted that. Yeah, that was uh, not bad. When Medusa gets to two, I wonder if I could even put her like on the outside. How insane is that? Guys, it's Retaliate. It's so good. <laughs> That's probably pretty insane. So we can look at positioning here as a way to try to improve where we're at. So this guy is... Dr what the fuck? 
This guy's like left cornered. Um, this guy's left cornered with knights, no dragons. And this guy's left cornered with a pretty s not standard hunters build. He's got three hunters. The left corner is knights, no dragons, and left cornered with these hunters. Are we not good here? This is a little spooky. Now nah, we're good. Dealing way too much damage, I think. We just have no choice but to miss this interest point, unfortunately. So they're both left cornered. Um, hunters. We want to typically be, I think, cross cornered. Cross cornered makes the most sense. So we're in this. We're in the right position that we want here. Um. I mean, being cross cornered does split our draw in this case. But against these comps. Do you want Slarda tanking? Ah, we we have to. Nah, we don't want to be cross cornered. Let's go ahead and just be uh, vertically Let's cross. So the way the way you typically want to think about this puzzle is whether like whether you'd like the boards to collapse or not. Because if they're cross cornered like diagonally, both boards are kind of going to collapse on each other and formations are going to be lost. Oh my god, this blood seeker just went off like crazy. He's killing everything. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, I can't kill Axe! Dude, thank god I put this axe in, guys. Man. <laughs> Will you lose your virginity in the next decade? What is it now? 2019. I'm 26. So I've got until 36. I've got, I feel like I've got pretty good odds. I I think I could take a bet on that. Why do you go into a corner and leave an empty backline for assassins? Uh, because then my formation will split apart a little bit, and I don't want that. I mean, assassins are kind of a meme. Like, the whole point of boxing up is I don't want my formation to split. If I'm in the back, my formation will pretty likely split apart when I have to walk forward. The entire reason of, like, boxing up is that I want to be pressed to the front. I mean, who's, who's assassins in this lobby? Is, like, is this one random guy with Bloodseeker? I don't know. I mean, you could argue that's the only board I lose against. I guess I could see that. So now that we're stable, we have to roll to outs. Our outs are too powerful right now. Sniper and Medusa are still kind of what we're looking for. Double Conca is not bad. We cannot... I think just go to level 10 yet. Honestly, our outs aren't that good. Maybe we could go to level 10. Now let's go to 10. We're looking for Tide Hunter. I actually do want 10. We've bought ourselves like enough time to go for this. At 30, you become a wizard. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that meme. Low odds of rolling to virginity out. I'll just keep econing. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean... Sex is pretty overrated, guys. I'm not gonna lie. So this is a this is a pretty interesting spot. I don't feel like I need Black King Bar here. Radiance is not like the most useful thing for exactly this comp, and I don't even have a good Radiance carrier. I have to think I'm still good against most things. This Bloodseeker could be a little bit awkward. Okay, we got the Bloodseeker. If we got the Bloodseeker- Oh, bomb! Get down! Okay, that didn't actually do much. Um, I don't think Enigma is really what we're gonna want in Hunters. It doesn't really counter our opponents. Our opponent at this point is like the Hunter Mirror. Um, wow. Two people just got knocked out there. So we're good. 
Would you put Sniper there? Uh, he can attract some fire. So the reason I want to clump things together is like, I want things to all attack the same unit. Oh yeah, Gyro could actually be a kind of okay. I want things to all attack the same unit, basically. Um, did I? Attack speed on Sniper is pretty important. I'm not using Enigma. Let's try, let's try glory. to get the dead eye online. I've, I, I think this actually is kind of okay. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Um, I guess Gyro, oh, he doesn't have like infinite range. Yeah, he should be moved like one or two steps left. He had to walk one step there, which is pointless. Deadeye is such a strange alliance. I like it, it's cool. I think they should add more of that kind of thing to the game, where it's like, I, I, I do think it's weird that, I like the idea of this alliance, I like the text, but it is weird that one of them is a hunter and one of them is just a random five cost that does nothing. Well like it's attached to weird I units, for sure. So here, like we're approaching the end of the game. So, I think playing for interest at this point is just completely fruitless. Here's the Dusa. Um, I mean, even right now, there's kind of no reason to play for any amount of interest, right? So, Gyro should be here. This should be quick. Again, the reason we're clumping up, a large part of that is just because of Drow Aura. We want to abuse that as much as possible, but she can only be buffing eight units. So, there's no reason to have another unit in that corner. He might attract some AoE on this edge. Um, and he's attacking the same unit as Sniper anyway. The thing is, okay, so think about it like this. The reason you clump up is because you want your units to focus something, and you want one of your units to get focused. Like, check this out. We have Slardar. So, the puzzle of Underlords is all about how do you figure out how to make your units focus something, and make your opponent's units not focus something, right? Think about it like that. Because you want to be focusing something down, but you want your units to split tank. Well, when we've got Retaliate Slardar with Vanguard, suddenly we don't want to be split tanking. So we want this to main tank and we want everything else kind of behind it. That's good. Axe is like secondary tank with Radiance, looks very good, right? Um, but I don't think he's moving or anything. I'm just trying to explain this. But it's important that things are all clustered together so that they all attack the same target because things attack what's closest to them. But with Deadeye, they don't. With Deadeye, they attack the lowest health enemy, so I can have him on the side, and he'll attack what I want him to attack without him being close to the others, which is great. And he also has a very long range, so he can be, like, way tucked in the corner, maybe attract some, like, AoE to that area. Could be. He's not picking up the drow buff, so there's no reason for him to be anywhere else. Um, it's just a better spot for him to be, right? You have to understand, like, why you corner box. I think a lot of people have this weird impression that you just corner box to beat assassins, which is not really the point, no. The question is, is Kanka 2 better than Axe 3 with Radiance? I mean, it's supposed to be, but he does have a Radiance. The man's got a Radiance, and they did just nerf Kanka 2 by like, some cell diameters, right? So now at this point, we want to we want to figure out whether we want to be, like, cross-comped against him, right? Let's see. So he's boxing on the right side, so he wants to be crossed against us, which I'm pretty happy with. It's a casual expanded roster. It's a little weird having space for this without it uh, running anything. So I think the the best thing to do is to just like challenge him on this. I'm gonna flip to the other side. Something like this. He's not flipping back, so we're good. We can move our slaughter like one step up as well. Now at this point, uh, nothing we do matters. It's it's most important to just spend our time like flipping our board rather than um, doing anything fancy here. But now that we're actually in the rounds, we can just try to get the level 3 Drow. Level 3 Drow is a really big upgrade to this build, so even though I'm rolling for a single out, we're good. I'm pretty sure he's dead here, but just in case he's not, it's always better to be spending time. Got the Drow level 3. So let's see if he managed to ass pull something on his board. He did not. Okay. So I guess the one thing, the one question there that we didn't have to answer is, what is better? Axe 3 with Radiance or Kanka? 
I do actually think it's, uh, I do actually think it's Radiance on Kanka. Leveled up to Big Boss level 2. Um, that's pretty neat. It was a little too slow. You guys are kind of pogging right now. It's not that pog. Big Boss level 2 is still not, like, that good. I need to get to level 3.